Let's turn to video three, the use of omega-3 fatty acids in children and adolescents. Omega-3 fatty acids are long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids that are derived from plant and marine sources. And the two omega-3 fatty acids of primary interest to us for potential psychiatric indications are eicosapentaenoic acid, EPA for short, easier to pronounce, and docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA for short. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential to brain function and development. There are also a critical component of neuronal membranes and are essential for their optimal functioning and serve as substrates for the production of the eicosanoids, that is, the prostaglandins necessary for cell communication and immune regulation. Omega-3 fatty acids have also demonstrated potent anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive features, which could be useful for treating a variety of psychiatric and non-psychiatric illnesses. So let's turn to potential indications for the omega-3 fatty acids. And the first diagnosis we think of is going to be major depressive disorder because it's such a hot area of research in terms of the role of inflammation in depression and anti-inflammatories in the treatment of depression. Only two randomized controlled trials have been completed which compare the efficacy of omega-3 fatty acid supplementation versus placebo in children with depression. Results from an initial randomized controlled trial with a small sample as well as a more recent randomized controlled trial with a larger sample both suggest omega-3 supplementation significantly improved depression severity in comparison to placebo. Taken as a whole, current evidence suggests omega-3 supplementation provides a small to modest effect for standard antidepressant treatment in children and adolescents with depression compared to placebo. However, the overall quality of this evidence is considered to be low. Despite the modest treatment effect, Omega-3 supplementation is safe, it's easy, it's inexpensive, and sensible given the potential benefit for cardiovascular health. While more evidence from randomized controlled trials are needed, omega-3 supplementation appears to be acceptable for youth with major depressive disorder while awaiting more definitive research. And I think another important area of research is considering its supplementation in patients getting non-medication therapies, psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. Let's look at its potential indication for bipolar disorder. To date, there has been one randomized controlled trial and two open-label trials which examine the efficacy of omega-3 fatty acids for treating pediatric bipolar disorders. Both open-label trials showed a modest improvement in manic symptoms in bipolar youth. However, only a small percentage experienced a greater than 50% decrease on the YMRS. A recent randomized control trial comparing the combination of omega-3 fatty acids with psychoeducational psychotherapy found that combined treatment was associated with greater improvement in depressive but not manic symptoms, although manic symptoms also decreased during the study. A follow-up study was conducted between two to five years after the randomized controlled trial to evaluate the long-lasting effects of combined therapy, but found no significant differences in outcomes between those treated with omega-3 fatty acids compared with those who did not. Despite these mixed results and a modest treatment effect noted in current studies, omega-3 fatty acids may still be a viable treatment option given their relatively safe profile and other healthful effects. That being said, additional trials are needed to determine whether omega-3 supplementation could play a therapeutic role in pediatric bipolar disorder. Autism spectrum disorder. This is a very interesting and hot area for a variety of reasons. Omega-3 fatty acids have been examined as a potential treatment for autism spectrum disorder 
specific for the associated symptom of hyperactivity. In spite of the excitement and mechanistic thinking in terms of research, most studies fail to show statistical significance in improving either autism core symptoms or hyperactivity. Three randomized controlled trials each noted a trend for improvement in hyperactivity compared to placebo. However, all studies failed to reach statistical significance and no effects were noted in social withdrawal, irritability, inappropriate speech, or stereotypy as measured by the ABC. With randomized control trials and open-label trials all failing to show statistically significant effects, the evidence for omega-3 supplementation in autism spectrum disorder is low. Nevertheless, omega-3 supplementation is safe, and its use may be acceptable for autism spectrum disorder while awaiting more definitive research. Let's turn to potential indications for ADHD. Both omega-3 and omega-6 PUFAs have been well studied as a potential treatment for children with ADHD. In fact, there have been 16 published randomized control trials examining the efficacy of PUFA supplementation in children with ADHD, as well as two meta-analyses and one Cochrane review. Results from these studies observed that children with ADHD had lower levels of both omega-3 and omega-6 compared with controls. Evidence from a meta-analysis of 10 trials with data from 700 children found a significant but small effect of PUFA supplementation on ADHD symptoms, as well as a significant dose-response slope with greater response in those using higher concentrations of EPA. An earlier meta-analysis also concluded that omega-3 fatty acids offer promise as a possible supplement to traditional therapies. In contrast, however, a Cochrane review in 2012 concluded that most of the data in ADHD patients showed no benefit for PUFAs. The review authors did find evidence of some improvement in symptoms from treatment with a combination of EPA, DHA, and a small amount of omega-6, though. Another review suggested that omega-3 fatty acid administration may provide the most significant benefit in those patients with severe ADHD who used omega-3s to reduce the dosage of stimulant medication and associated medication side effects. Despite inconsistent evidence resulting from methodological issues across randomized controlled trials, current evidence does suggest a possible benefit from PUFA supplementation with traditional ADHD therapies. However, the overall quality of the evidence is low and no conclusive guidance can be given. It's also important to note that PUFA supplementation should not be recommended as a replacement for treatment approaches with more robust evidence basis. Omega-3 fatty acids have generated considerable attention and excitement. My own personal experience, however, is that while well-tolerated overall, there is minimal to no benefit seen when I've used this for ADHD, depression, bipolar disorder, or anxiety. Dosage and administration. Effective standardized doses of omega-3 fatty acids have yet to be determined, but between 1 to 2 grams per day with a 2 to 1 ratio of EPA to DHA is considered an acceptable dose in children. Omega-3 fatty acid supplements should be taken with a meal that contains dietary fat to increase absorption. Current recommendations suggest omega-3 fatty acids should be taken for a minimum of three months to evaluate treatment effects. However, six months is preferred. Side effects of omega-3 fatty acids are generally mild, and the most commonly reported include mild GI complaints, such as loose stools, as well as a fishy taste or fishy burps. However, omega-3 fatty acids may also decrease platelet aggregation and prolong bleeding time and should be used with caution in patients taking anticoagulants. Despite inconsistent results, 
Current evidence suggests omega-3 supplementation provides a modest benefit in children and adolescents with mood disorders or ADHD. However, the overall quality of the evidence is low and no conclusive guidance can be made. It's also important to note that omega-3 supplementation should not be recommended as a replacement for conventional treatment approaches with a more evidence basis to them. Side effects of omega-3 fatty acids, fortunately, are generally mild, but omega-3 fatty acids may decrease platelet aggregation and prolong bleeding time and should be used with caution in patients taking anticoagulants. While more evidence from additional randomized controlled trials is needed, omega-3 supplementation appears to be acceptable for youth with mood disorders, autism spectrum disorder, and ADHD, 